Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I was just doing a little bit of chip research, looking at doing the 800 kilometer Swisher Loop in Quebec this summer. Maybe. So today we're gonna to talk about vehicle mods again. Like I mentioned in the last episode, the Ford Bronco was engineered with customization and modification in mind. On today's episode, we're going to be discussing, in my opinion, the single best mod you can make to the Bronco, and well, to any Ford vehicle for that matter. What makes this mod so cool is that it isn't a bumper and winch, or differential regearing, or even any other piece of hardware you might expect, but rather an app and software you run on a laptop and cell phone. And as the title mentions, it's absolutely free. The software I'm talking about, of course, is called Forescan. Forescan is an OBD2 software scanner designed for Ford, Lincoln, and Mazda vehicles. Because it was developed for these vehicles specifically, it can access and diagnose codes from vehicle modules that other OBD2 scanners can't access. Not only that, but the software can also run the same service and test procedures that your Ford dealer has access to, which is a huge bonus that no other over-the-counter Canadian Tiger AutoZone OBD2 scanner can do. As I mentioned, the software is free to download and use once you register on the Forescan website. Check the link in the description below. Let me give you an example of just how powerful this software is. On my very own 2021 Bronco, after about 20,000 kilometers or so of driving, I began to notice the transmission was shifting in the third gear rather hard and abruptly, regardless of if I was just putting around or if I had my foot hard in it. With the free Forescan Lite app on my phone, I was able to access the transmission control module through the service function and force a relearn command to it, effectively resetting the driving data it had gathered since new. The third gear abrupt shift was gone, and not only that, I also noticed that all the other up and down shifts were noticeably smoother as well. Before we get too far into the weeds on this, let's back it up a bit. You may be wondering what exactly an OBD2 is. OBD2 is a Vehicle Communication Port and Protocol, which stands for Onboard Diagnostics. The 2 is just a newer, more up-to-date version that's been around since about 1996. All production road legal vehicles sold globally use this protocol and have the same universally similar data port where your mechanic plugs in with his diagnostic device, usually accessed under the dash on the driver's side of the car. If you ever had a car with a familiar check engine light show up on the dash, this is the OBD2 system telling you it's detected an anomalous or out of tolerance sensor data somewhere on the vehicle. Of course, your car doesn't tell you exactly what is wrong, only that something is wrong. Consulting the owner's manual usually tells you to immediately visit the local dealership and have the car serviced. Once the diagnostic equipment is connected to the vehicle, the OBD system delivers a saved standardized code that the scanner is able to interpret. There are literally hundreds upon hundreds of codes this system uses to cover all aspects of vehicle function. From there, it looks up the code in the database and tells you, somewhat plain English, what the issue is. Modern vehicles like our Ford Bronco are full of dozens upon dozens of computers or modules, something my dealership always alludes to when discussing extended warranty plans. Connected to these modules is a vast array of sensors that monitor all aspects of vehicle operation, such as independent wheel speed, crankshaft position, exhaust oxygen levels, steering wheel position, and of course, the obvious things like fuel and windshield washer fluid levels, just to name a few. All this information is connected to and works on a standardized automotive communication network, or BUS, that the modules can understand and communicate back and forth with. Of course, some of this data is prioritized more than others or provides vast amounts of continuous data. Therefore, there are different communication protocols such as the high speed and medium speed CAN bus or controller area networks. As mentioned, the protocol is standardized across the auto industry, but individual manufacturers can and do implement their own additional protocols outside of the OBD2 standard, and they're specific to their fleet of vehicles. Simple low priority air data, such as not having your fuel cap securely fastened or catalytic system efficiency below threshold warnings, can easily be diagnosed and reset with a $50 scanner from your local pet boys. But what makes the Forescan software so powerful is that it also has the ability to access the high and medium speed networks, and in particular, the four specific protocols on board the Bronco that off-the-shelf scanners can't communicate with. As with my earlier transmission reset example, Forescan allows you to command various service and test functions on the vehicle modules that normally only your Ford service technician or professional mechanic has access to. And of course, also diagnose and reset common OBD errors or issues as well, like the cheap scanners do. But beyond service and diagnostic procedures, 
What makes Forescan really unique and special is it also gives you the ability to access and change or customize aspects of the vehicle functions or behaviors. Most of what is customizable on the Bronco is configured in the BCM or body control module, a module that controls a vast array of common vehicle functions such as turn signals, door locks, lighting, and much more. Of course, with the ability for just about anyone to go in and change and configure modules and functions comes the risk that you can potentially mess it up or make a mistake that would cause erratic or unintentional behaviors, or worse, turn your brand new Bronco into a brick. Which is why before attempting to make any changes in the modules, the Forescan team thoughtfully gave us the ability to back up the factory settings of all the accessible modules and save it to your laptop. If you happen to mess something up, you can easily restore your factory spec back up to the module. I want to make it fully clear that there is a real element to messing something up if you don't do it properly. But if you're paying attention and make the necessary backups, you can pretty much negate any risk. To me, the risk was well worth it just to eliminate the door ajar, seatbelt and key and ignition chimes every time I got in the truck. Besides the aforementioned annoying chimes, the other changes I made to my Bronco were to enable fog lights with high beams, known in the community as Bambi mode, I assume as it helps you see potential deer with the extra illumination. I also enabled global window close with the key fob, something that Ford deems too dangerous and liable for the North American market. Global windows opening function is available from the factory already. Another aspect of the truck that bothered me was the speedo measuring, two kilometers an hour slower than my actual GPS vehicle speed, something that's pretty common in new vehicles. I corrected this in the PCM and TCM modules, telling the computer that my tire circumference was slightly smaller than what the factory specified, which the computer automatically uses to display the speedo data. Another popular mod on the Bronco is enabling extra go modes. My Badlands comes with a Baja mode, but no sport mode, like some of the other trims. That was easily fixed with a hexadecimal character change in one of the block lines in the body control module. Interestingly enough, with regards to the fog lights, my Badlands with the modular steel bumper doesn't actually come with fog lights from the factory. However, the harnesses in the wiring loom up front are already there. Thanks for it. Conveniently, the headlight switch cluster in the Broncos are the same units that come with the F-150, and knowing that the F-150 is sold overseas, with a little research, I found the part number for a switch that also has a rear fog light option. That was the switch I bought and installed. And wouldn't you know it, the harness in the back of the Bronco has a lead for the rear fog lights as well. With both fog lights enabled in the BCM, all that was left to do was enable them in the instrument control module so the dash lights would illuminate when the fog lights were on. Now we just need to actually find some fog lights to install. Speaking of the F-150, it would seem the Bronco has much more in common with the pickup than just the headlight switch. A lot of the body control module functions and coding seem to be very much alike as well, and the F-150 community are already miles ahead on tinkering and discovering the module functions and secrets than what the Bronco community has learned so far. Of course, the two aren't exactly identical, and some features or functions could very much be simply omitted on the Bronco. Many adventurous owners love tinkering in the modules to find out what kind of changes they can make, and a public Google Doc is available and continuously updated. You can find that link and others below in the description. I'll say this for certain, modifying your car nowadays isn't anything like it was back in the day. So a couple other things before we move on. The common service and diagnostic procedures can be performed using the free cell phone app. However, making custom changes to the modules can only be done running the PC software. To get access to these extra features, you need to request an extended software license. The extended software license is also free, functional for two months, after which time you have to request another one. If this is too cumbersome, a one-year extended license can be purchased for a fee. Personally, I've made the changes and never had to go back into the modules once programmed, so it doesn't make any sense to me to purchase the license. In either case, besides the app or laptop or 15-year-old netbook, which I use, you're also going to need a way to physically connect your laptop or phone to the vehicle. For this, you will need an OBD adapter, either a wireless Bluetooth dongle or a traditional wired USB adapter to plug into the PC. I use a Bluetooth module for the simple fact that I can connect my Bronco using my cell phone as well as my netbook. People at Forescan are pretty specific about which adapter they recommend and which are compatible. For Bluetooth modules, they just have two recommendations, which are linked on the website. So if you already have a BT OBD adapter, you'll have to check on the website for functionality and compatibility. I use the OBD Link MX Plus as that was basically the only real option available at the time I bought it. 
They also now recommend a more affordable V-Linker FD adapter. So I guess in reality, if you don't already have an adapter, then this mod truly isn't a free one, but for $35 cost of a dongle, the ability to make the changes to your truck and revert back to factory settings anytime you want, it's a pretty small price to pay. If you go budget shopping for an adapter outside of the four scan links, be aware that there are a lot of knockoff and counterfeit modules being sold, especially on Amazon, and they will likely give you more headaches than they're worth. My plan for this video wasn't intended to be an in-depth how-to or a tutorial on how to specifically go and make changes for every conceivable option. There are just way too many functions and parameters to cover in a simple YouTube video. Instead, I'll give a couple examples of a specific and annoying double honk function and how to disable it. Forescan is continually being updated with better support for newer models, new functions, fixes, and improvements. If you've downloaded and installed it before, be sure to go to the website to make sure you have the latest version. Click on the products pages where you can download the software. You also need to get a free extended license. After you have the software installed, copy the hardware ID to the clipboard and paste it in the required field. Fill in your name and email address and send the request. They will send you an email with an attached license file. For whatever reason, the file extension needs to be changed for the software to see it. Go to where you saved the file and rename it to .key. From the program, click on the load license key and browse to your saved location and load it. Once you restart the software, you're good to go. Before we connect to the Bronco, you might want to familiarize yourself a bit with the written how-to doc. As I mentioned, it's well written and full of good info. Once you feel comfortable with proceeding, you'll want to take your OBD adapter and plug it into the OBD port. Turn on the ignition, but leave the engine off. Be sure your truck and laptop both have plenty of battery. It'll take a second for the Bluetooth to connect. Once it does, it'll discover your truck and begin searching for the modules. Once all the modules are loaded, click on the chip icon, third from the bottom, to bring up the module list. Before we make any changes, we're going to make data backups of the modules labeled as built formatted only. Starting from the top with the power control module, click the play icon button to connect to that specific module. You'll get a disclaimer pop up Hit OK to continue and the program will start reading the module block addresses. Once it's done reading, it'll list all the address blocks as well as all the hexadecimal parameters for each. From here, you'll simply hit the Save All button, create a new folder called Original, and give it the module name, in this example, PCM, and then save it. Click the stop button to disconnect from the module. You're going to follow these steps for each as-built module until you have a complete backup. When it comes to making modifications, for example to the body control module, clicking play on the entry without the as-built tag will open up the plain English option for making changes. As you can see, there are a lot of entries, some of which don't make much sense on the surface. Take for example, bed lamp, obviously a holdover option meant for a pickup truck. In this example, we're going to disable the double honk, something that happens when you exit the truck with the engine on and close the door behind you. Super annoying. Click on the entry, then the edit selected button. You can see that I already have it disabled on my Bronco. But to effect the change, Choose your option, click OK, and then click the right button to make the change in the module. I'm leaving mine disabled, thank you very much. Once written, clicking stop once again disconnects us from that module. So for the other method for modifying modules is by actually editing the hexadecimal data in the block addresses. Looking at the Google Doc will provide you with which digits need to be edited to make a change and show you what options are changeable. Again, we're going to look at the double honk example in this vid to demonstrate how we do this. We can see that the body control module is the one we need to connect to, but this time we're going to connect to the as-built module version. Again, click on the disclaimer, let it read the module blocks, and then it'll pull up the list of block addresses. 
So on the dock we see we want to find module address 726-63-02. The X's represent the data we want left alone and only the digits represented by asterisks are the ones we want to change. In this case, one is enabled and zero is disabled. Now scroll down until we find the block we want to edit. All BCM module block addresses in the Bronco begin with 726. When you find the block in the column, we see that mine is naturally already disabled, represented by the zero for the fourth digit. If we want to enable it, we'd simply change it to a one and then click the right button to effect the change. This procedure is the same for all hex editing. It's just a matter of what module, which block line, and which digits get changed to what. When we click on the DTC button, or Diagnostic Trouble Codes, the software will talk to each module looking for any stored errors. On my PCM module, you can see an error present from my active grill shutters. Apparently they're inoperable for some reason. <clears throat> There's also a code present on the BCM showing an open circuit for my rear fog light. Seeing as I have the lights enabled, but no actual light plugged in, it thinks there's an issue. On my passenger door module, it's showing a similar error for the puddle light. I'll have to look into this sometime and see if there's an actual fault. For clearing any errors presently shown, simply press the reset DTC button, confirm the pop-up, and then cycle the ignition off and on, then hit OK and Forescan. As for the phone app, it couldn't be easier. Open the app and let it connect. The log shows it finding the same modules as a laptop software and the same DTCs present. Going into the test page and we can see the modules listed and the diagnostic self-test that we can perform. Activating one will start a built-in test routine to check for proper functioning of the module. Let me demonstrate a self-test on the HVAC system. If you listen carefully, you can hear the blower motor ramp up and down and the outlet dampers opening and closing, checking their function. The service function page will give you the ability to do a reset on troublesome modules to see if that might erase any irreverent data that might be causing an issue, like what I found with my transmission shifting. Well, that was my typical way too informative tutorial on foreskin and modifying the Bronco modules. I hope you found it informative and useful enough that you can confidently customize your Bronco the way you want it and not the way Ford wanted you to have it. If you're not already a member, check out the Bronco 6G forums. Always all the latest breaking news and the biggest community of Bronco enthusiasts online. An excellent source of Bronco related information. Like always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, what are you waiting for? Until next time, thanks for watching.